Um, I was really delighted last night. I don't know how many of you recovered from the, the late night, but I learned a lot about uh, Norwegian history, and especially pedagogy. Did you like that story about the, uh, the way the English elite was defeated in 1665? <laughs> yeah? I've never got the pleasure with which that was told. <laughs> The other one was the story as we were eating about the young boys that were strung upside down under yes. the, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. The sadistic pedagogy, you know, of the Norwegian history. I thought it was very good. <laughs> so thank you for that. I've learned a tremendous amount. Um, what I was hoping to um, just talk with you in about an hour and 20 minutes, but something which is memorable, something which is useful to you. And it actually builds on uh, what Petzolotzi was saying. And when you think that he died in 1847, and Carrie put the quote up about love and loving, and I don't know how many of you had chance to read it, but it was very powerful. I, I read it three or four times this morning, where Petzolotzi was talking about uh, you can't actually understand love or define love from understanding. You've actually got to be engaged in loving. Okay, so you, you can actually talk about love without any understanding whatsoever of what loving is. You can only come to an understanding of love through loving, through the action, through the activity. And that's, I really do want to concentrate a little today on the values that you hold as educators. Because I suspect that from the energy I felt in the room at times, you really do love what you do in education. Last night over dinner, just talking to Tom, it was fantastic, the energy that Tom brings into what he's talking about in education. He clearly is passionate in relation to his love for education. Carrie is the same, and I'm hoping as you're discussing for this session that you will say just a little bit about your thesis, because I've learned about the modesty of Norwegian researchers. You don't <laughs> tend to say how good you are. You know, it seems to be a cultural issue here about not really going public on what it is that you do extremely well. So I, do, I hope you will say a little in this session just about your thesis. And the other thing I, I want to really focus on is something from the guitar making and the guitar playing. Now it was clear that the musicians loved what they were doing. The actual building of the guitar and the actual playing of the guitar. But I just want you to consider a moment what the object of your activity really is. Because if you think of the guitar as your students, then what you're doing is helping to form the lives of individual human beings. So it's rather like the talent that was being brought into the guitar making and playing. You are bringing your values of humanity, and Christine asked about what kind of society do we want at the end of yesterday's session. I think you're actually generating and creating literally the next generation in terms of the society in which we live. So it's rather like thinking of your talents, like the guitar maker and player, but your material is actually the young people or the adults that you're helping to educate. Am, am I making myself clear there? Because yes. that is what I am interested in. I must apologise that I must be the only person in this room with one language. <laughs> <laughs> that you've all got amazing abilities, which in England, um, we simply are very weak indeed in speaking in other people's language. And I have seen your attention and the way in which you have been understanding what people are saying in your second language. So I think, again, you've got enormous talent in this room, which I'd love to encourage you to make public. Because this is my purpose in being with you, and in a minute, I'm just going to pause and just ask, what is your purpose in being here? Do you want anything from this session that I'm with you now for an hour or so? What is it that you want from this session? Because I'm very clear that what I want is to stimulate you to research your own practice as educators. I'm very clear that I want you, and I want to show you, how to create multimedia accounts of your influences as educators with your students. Now, at the moment, there will be very few accounts from people in this room flowing through web space that other educators can access around the world. Can I, can I, let me just check. 
how many of you have got an explanation of your influence as educators with your students flowing through web space? Can I, how many of you have got those accounts? We've got one, we've got two. So in a room of about 50, we have two. Paul, you've got one of yours. And Paul will be talking tomorrow about sustainable communities. And that is really crucial. I'm hoping that I'll show you some of the things that might help in the creation of a sustainable community together for us. Because after this, after this session, we're going to be looking at the promoting of core values. For, and I know competences are there, but I tend to focus on values through a European network. So that's coming after my talk. And I'm hoping to show you how you could contribute to the creation of those networks, which are sustainable, through the web. But when you think in this room now, the talent that has come from 17, is it 19 different countries? So from the Council of Europe, with 47 different countries, 19 are represented in this room. We have only two, and one is from the UK as well. That is four. Now, I know most of you, just in terms of looking at text on a screen, will not actually see this as an electronic portal through which the accounts that I'll show you today, if I just press on one of these buttons here, for example, from my website, uh, this is actionresearch.net, I'll just see that if I can um, just put up the, uh, the size so that you can see it. Now, if you think that this is an electronic portal, and if I just click on this particular section, now, what is flowing into this room now, which you can access, are some 30 doctoral theses and some master's theses, which have made available to you, so you can access those. If you've got wireless connection, you can actually see what educators in different parts of the world are actually doing as they try to improve their practice and live their values as fully as they can. So am I, again, I hope I'm making sense, there's an electronic portal flowing into this room so you can just access it. And you can actually just go into any of these and you can just click on them. These are two that I really like. Uh, husband and wife, it was the only husband and wife that I supervised their doctorates uh, to completion, Karen Riding and Simon Riding. And you can go into there because Karen was very courageous. And just look at that first sentence. Can you see this? In this account, I explain the shared life that I lead with my husband Simon transforms itself into a loving energy that emerges in our educational practice. Now that fits with what Pestalozzi was saying, that actually you need to show yourself in the sense of loving as a practice before you can actually claim that you understand what love is. And Karen had the courage to recognize that through her relationship with Simon, it provided a lot of sustaining loving energy which she could bring into the classroom with her pupils and actually communicate that passion and love for what she was doing in being with them and that was legitimated as a doctoral thesis in relation to uh, universities with external examiners. And they, these doctors that I'm showing you are um, really distinguished by the way in which so many of them acknowledge the importance of loving within what they do. 